Rick, uh, do you have any kind of update on Julian and Josiah? What do you expect their availability to be tomorrow? Again, I think it'll be game time decision based on where we are right now. As you all gone back and watched the film for that first Kentucky game, just what were some areas that stood out that you all need to be a, a better in tomorrow? One's rebounding. I mean, they just absolutely annihilated us on the glass and almost, I think, doubled us up. And the uh, fact is we had a lot of blown coverages. They played really good basketball. and uh, But we, we've got to do a better job on the, on the boards and certainly we've got to do a better job with our scout report. Rick, the last time you played, I think Urosh played as many minutes against Kentucky as he has the last three games combined. If, if I'm not asking for any trade secrets here, but if, if Kentucky takes away the perimeter like so many teams have, do you sense Urosh being as busy or do you think there's a little bit of a different dynamic down low compared to a month ago? No, I think, it, again, we've, we've talked about all your consistency and it's not just on one side of the ball, it's everything. And, you know, we feel confident with, with Urosh, Olivier, Jonas, and Tobey and and like I said before, we're, you know, we go in the game knowing that we're going to need every one of those guys, and we expect them all to be ready to play, and we need them all. I mean, uh, as you know, night to night, some guys might be – might not have exactly what, what, they, what they'd like to have and what we need them to have, and we'll go to the next guy, and if he's got it, we're going to go with that person. And uh, But we, we count on every one of those guys going into every game. And the last time we played him, you know, he did score the ball well down there for us, but we don't go into this game thinking it's going to be played the same way because we know – that Kentucky's going to make adjustments and do some different things, and as we will have to. And so uh, we'll, we'll prepare with everybody, knowing that we need them all, and then we'll see what personality the game takes on. Rick, Jimmy, and Mike. I guess uh, picking up, uh, Rick, on David's question there, you know, Kentucky has been vulnerable this season, giving up points in the paint, and you guys did have some, some success in that first meeting. How important will it be to play that inside-out game against these guys tomorrow? Well, whether it's Kentucky or anyone, we feel that's what we need to do. And, and, uh, and there's, again, there's different ways to, to, you know, to do that. And, uh, but, again, we always try to play inside out. Rick, we, that's what we always try to do. Rick, you mentioned getting annihilated on the boards. After watching the tape of that game, was it not blocking out? Was it lack of effort or something else? A little bit of all of it, you know, where we, uh, you know, we came out. Remember, we – we got, a, I think, an 8-0 lead on or something like that in the first time out. And then when we actually started subbing, you know, we just totally lost what momentum we had. And they captured it. And they, they kept – uh, you know, they were being efficient with everything that they were doing. And uh, and we got anxious and started uh, really uh, undisciplined, you know, leaving shooters and doing things that can't be when you scout them. And, you know, everybody's expected to be on the same page and when you're not. But – Again, I'm not taking any because they came in here and it was a, at the time everyone thought they were struggling and like they were, but they came in, they locked in and they, they, they beat us. And considering the way Kentucky played you the first time around, Rick, how important do you think three point shooting will be for you? I mean, I think it's important in every game, but we, we've talked about our team all year long. There's been nights that I think we're like any team when we're shooting the basketball. I think any team in the country, when they're making shots, they're hard to beat any team at this level. And if not, uh, you've got to find a way to impact the game, affect the game, and try to come away with a win. But, yeah, I, as coaches, I think if you ask any coach before a game, what's going through your mind? And the answer would really be, if we were all honest, would be, I hope we can make some shots. And if we can make a bunch of them, we, we, all, we all know if we can make shots, we've got a chance. Rick, when you went back and got a chance to watch the film, how – much more maybe impressive was what Jamai did than, than what you were able to see. Well, you, you know, we, uh, he, he obviously he, he did an, a terrific job on a terrific player and he was locked in and we needed him to do that. And, and uh, our breakdowns, you know, we, we did go zone, I think two or three possession and one of them, he wasn't in the game because, you know, at the time, I think Santi had a couple of fouls, Zakai had picked up some and we thought, well, let's see if we can, try to get a couple possessions here and and we didn't get to uh, right out of a timeout we didn't get the zone set gave up a wide open shot and then when we got it set on the other side uh, we didn't um, we weren't stretched out where we should have been we gave up two threes they made against the zone but looking at his individual performance I, I again he, he he's he's locked in he's done that for us all year and um, he uh, again just a great example of a guy that can impact the game and 
really not score points, but uh, he, we need him. We're going to need him again tomorrow doing the same thing. Go to Tom, Ryan, and Jimmy. Hi, Coach. Um, so I'm working on a story about the SEC tournament, and I know there's a lot of basketball still to be played, but your win the other night showed that this SEC tournament is still just going to be wide open this year, that anybody can win. Um, what are your thoughts looking ahead? Well, I would agree with you. I think more than any time, uh, I mean, certainly Alabama, you know, we, we, our league, you know, we have the number one team in the country in Alabama. And I said before that game that uh, they probably should have been number one prior back a couple of weeks ago, they should have been. And, uh, but we got that. And then the balance, uh, again, it's probably more wide open than it's been in the eight years that I've been in the SEC. I, I really, and I mean that sincerely in the fact that it, as you know, when you get into tournament play, so much depends on matchups, you know, and how it plays out. So until we get to the that tournament and see who's going to play who and what, um, but I know this that uh, I look around the league this year. I mean, coaches. There's so many coaches that have done just great jobs uh, with their teams and kept them in there. I don't know if anybody's been more unlucky than, than Kermit at, at Ole Miss, but uh, otherwise. Uh, you look, I mean, there have been some great, just great games within our league, and I would expect the tournament to be maybe the best it's been since I've been here. You told the team in the locker room after the game that that was one of the best defensive performances that has ever been a part of on a team you coached. After watching the film, do you still feel that way? And if so, why? And I thought the – the uh, other than those breakdown – those those were breakdowns that shouldn't have happened. I just mentioned in the zone, and that they, they shouldn't have happened because we – we talked about it enough and had talked to a, a couple of players about what we needed them to do. But I thought the concentration with what we do, uh, I thought effort, again, I do think for the most part, we've, we've played, we've been a team that's given really good effort, but I thought the concentration level, especially with our perimeter players were terrific. And a couple of threes that they got uh, on their dribble handoff and they, they're really good at it was not because of our perimeter guys. It was our, uh, again, it goes back to our post guys, and that's why we keep talking about our post players being able to get out there and help the on those dribble handoffs, especially against teams that can raise up and shoot it. But I just thought the mental concentration uh, from a standpoint was one of the, the best that I'd seen. Ricky, the, uh, the last seven games you've been outscored on fast break points, 77 to 13. Is that a stat that concerns you or a stat that you don't think that's important? Well, the only thing that concerns me, Jimmy, is we win or lose. I mean, the fact that we do what we need to do to go into the game. I mean, you, there's there's 10,000 stats out there, analytics, this, that, or whatever, and I guess you could take them and bend them any way you want to. The, what I'm concerned with is that, one, I want, I'd like to see us get healthy, but the fact of the matter is whatever we got like the other night, we're going to go play. We're going to go out and give it our – we go out and give it our best effort. I can live with it. And again, I'm probably one of the least guys that spend a lot of time looking at stats after games anyway. I mean, I, I just, I, I do everything I do off the film and uh, mm -hmm. stats can't, stats can't tell you all that. Uh, I just know that when we execute on offense and defense. I think we can be a really good basketball team. And like when you break down on the things I just said, coming out of a timeout, not getting where you need to be or, being two feet further back than you need to be. I don't know what stat tells you that other than watching the tape and letting you know that you got to fix it. And against Alabama, Jonas, they do, uh, Euros, Plav, Plavsics both scored in double digits. How pleased were you with those two bigs against Alabama? Well, we need them. I mean, I, 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 we need those guys. As, as I said earlier, we need everybody in the game to do what they do and what we need them to do for our team. That's it, We keep talking about understanding your role, playing your role every night and doing it to the very best of your ability and not trying to do things that we don't need you to do, but do exactly what this team needs you to do. And when those guys are doing that, obviously that's when we're at our, at our best. Finish up with Casey. Coach, you mentioned the mental concentration that this team has on defense. How have they been able to build that up to be so strong in that regard this season, especially with some of the younger guys on the team? How have they really come into that mental side of the game? Well, I think it's because of the older guys, you know, we've always tried to be good on that side of the, of the ball. And 
I do think that they've come in and uh, they've seen guys in practice do it daily. And uh, they, they've also, we've talked about how not all, not anyone in our program came in with that mindset. It's kind of been part of the culture that we've built, but it goes to them. You know, the players are the one and the ones that buy into it are the ones that can really help us do what we need to do. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys.